Hey, welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast and our special series featuring women athletic directors sharing their perspective, along with some great resources that all athletic directors can benefit from. Uh, we'll be back with today's guest, but we want to give a shout out to our partners, the Global Community of Women in High School Sports and We Coach. These are two fantastic organizations that you should really be a part of. So check out the Global Community of Women in High School Sports and We Coach. And now let's have a quick word from our podcast sponsors. We want to thank our friends at Sideline Interactive Indoor Scoring Tables and Video Boards. Their products not only generate income for your department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com for more information. That's sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to say thanks to Snap Mobile. Go to snapraise.com and check out their entire suite of platforms designed to help you do your job better. Snap Raise is their fundraising platform. We've used it with great success, and they've helped schools just like yours raise over $700 million. They also have a program where you can get your funding before you actually start your fundraiser. Does anybody else do that? Uh, you can also check out Snap Manage, uh, build an entire website, uh, Snap Store on and order custom spirit gear. Snap Connect is their multilingual family engagement platform. You can find it all. It's snapraise.com. That's snapraise.com. We also want to thank Hometown Ticketing for their support. Go to hometownticketing.com. They will show you how to set up and sell your tickets online. They'll show you how to scan the attendees that come to your game and collect your revenue. And every step of the way, you're going to have a dedicated client success manager providing hands-on support. Hometown will also show you how to sell tickets for things like school dances school plays and concerts, even graduation. You'll find it all at hometownticketing.com. Simple and easy online ticketing. We also want to thank our friends at Vital Signs Wall of Fame. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. Check out their interactive touchscreen video consoles and display your school's record boards for all your sports in one of the coolest ways possible. You can also do it for your school's Hall of Fame. Um, Vital Signs Wall of Fame allows you to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. Let them help you showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments. That's vitalsignswalloffame.com. We want to thank Huddle. Go to huddle.com and see why 200,000 teams across 40 different sports use Huddle to capture, analyze, and learn from the video and the analytics. Our coaches just love the smart cameras, the mobile apps. Of course, they love the analytics, but Huddle provides so much more. Go to Huddle.com, and you're going to find the tools to help your teams and your coaches play at their very best. Huddle is a professional-grade solution for the challenges you face as an athletic director. And you can find out more by going to huddle.com. Go to huddle.com and turn your school into a huddle school. We also want to say thank you to Gipper. Go to gipper.com and start creating world-class marketing content for your school's social media channel. You can do it in seconds on any device, and you don't need any design experience. Go to huddle.com, excuse me, go to gipper.com and tell me you heard about it on the podcast. Use the podcast code ADPOD10. That's gipper.com. Create custom branded content for your school's social media channel. And we want to say thank you to Final Forms, the industry leader in forms and registration, but it's so much more than that. If you go to finalforms.com, you're going to find out how uh, your coaches can communicate better with their parents, uh, take attendance. Uh, your parents are going to get reminders about policies, about physicals, and all the forms that come when you have an athlete in the house. And for athletic directors, Final Forms can help you with eligibility, with rosters, and all the reports that are generated out of your office. To take those next steps, go to finalforms.com slash Jake. 
That's finalforms.com slash Jake to get started with Final Forms. And we want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Athletic Surveys are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire program. At my schools, we used form, uh, surveys for just about everything, for coaches, for teachers, for parents, and for student athletes. And the information that came back was almost always positive. But sometimes those surveys would reveal a small issue that you could address and keep it from turning into a big issue because you didn't know about it because you hadn't done a survey. Go to athleticsurveys.com or email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your kids or your parents, you're really missing out. Talk to the pros at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast and our series featuring women athletic directors giving their perspective on challenges that we all face and sharing truly some best practices. Uh, our guest today, once again, is Tammy Talley. Tammy is a certified athletic administrator, and she is the county athletic director for Duval County Schools here in Florida. Um, very active at the state and national level. She's also on our FIAAA executive board, uh, and she's a good friend. Uh, Tammy, what do you have for our listeners today? Thanks, Jake. Um, today, I'd like to talk about Project 17, and it was an initiative that was started probably over 30 years ago in our district where we felt like safety was extremely important and we wanted our student athletes to be more safe. So how can we do that? Um, what the, the model that we used to work under was our schools had a supplement that was called TAT, Teacher Athletic Trainer. And so that allowed us to give a supplement to a coach or a teacher at the school who was going to manage the EL2s, the physicals. They were gonna manage the insurance documents, all of that. And then they would also help our schools, um, our coaches with first aid and CPR, um, make sure that we had a written emergency action plan, um, and, and then be there to do some general taping and maybe icing of student athletes in the event that they got injured or to help a little bit with prevention. Um, but we wanted to take it a step beyond that. We felt like it was important that we had full-time athletic trainers in our schools. And so how we did that is part of a, some collaboration and a partnership that we have with a local nonprofit called Jacksonville Sports Medicine Program. Um, we call them the JSMP. Our executive director, um, Bob Sefchek, um, also sits on the Sports Advisory um, Council with the FHSAA. And so he's our uh, executive director of JSMP, Jacksonville Sports Medicine, and he also um, has chaired it before, but I know he sits on the committee um, to assist with, you know, safety issues across the state. And so we partnered with them. Um, our board for the JSMP is made up of local um, hospitals, physical therapy groups, physicians, um, the Jaguars, Airstream Ventures, Alan Verlander from Airstream Ventures. So we just have a cross-reference of our community um, leaders who want to sit on this board and help us um, create um, full-time athletic trainers. And so the way it started is um, we have 17 high schools. So hence the name Project 17. And the way we did is we partnered with our local, one of our local universities, Jacksonville University, and they provided um, a master's program for these athletic trainers. And they would go to Jacksonville University to get their master's. Then they would work directly with um, Bob Sefchek of the JSMP. And then we would place them in our schools. So they were um, going to classes in the morning and then working in our schools in the afternoon, um, kind of like hands-on experience, almost like a teacher getting their internship, right? And so they would work with the athletic directors. So they are just, they're establishing their own protocols and procedures. They're putting together their athletic training room. 
They are doing first aid and CPR training for their coaches um, for two years. They get their master's in two years. They've now worked at a school for two years. And then, um, so let me back up. So we started with five schools. And after the first year, we added two schools. So we had a group A and a group B. So group A now of the five schools are in their second year and group B, which is two schools is in their first year. So we did that every year for six years. And then after the second year, when the five students graduated, they had an opportunity to apply for a full-time position, which the district picked up the cost of that. And then we added three additional Project 17 athletic trainers. So we have our um, Group A Project 17 athletic trainers, Group B Project 17 athletic trainers, and then our full-time athletic trainers. So it was kind of a, um, a stepping to get to the full-time athletic trainer. So every year, um, the Group A's were the first year, the Group B's were the second year, and then, the, and then they had the opportunity to apply for a full-time position. Um, almost always that individual was hired because they had already had a two-year interview, right? So now they become a full-time athletic trainer in the schools. And so we do that for six years until we get all the way to our last three schools that are in their final, their group B, their final year of that participation um, in the program. And then they become full-time athletic trainers. Um, but this did not happen without huge support and buy-in from not only the Jacksonville Jaguars, but the NFL as well. Um, we were able to get a grant from both of them every year to help support this program. Because not only do we need to pay for their master's degree, but we were also able to give them a little bit of spending money, you know, per diem money, things like that. And then also we went even a step beyond that and partnered with um, Gatorade and different organizations in the community to help um, get those supplies that they needed, right? Because here we are with a district that has no full-time athletic trainers. And so some schools have coolers, some don't. Some have water bottles, some don't. So it was a process to get us where we are today, which is all of our high schools have a full-time athletic trainer. Um, they had to go through, we had to create a job description um, to be able to post it. Then we had to come up with a search committee. We had to come up with an interview committee. Um, and then we ended up offering positions to individuals so that now here we are with full-time athletic trainers. Um, phase two of Project 17 was hiring a supervisor who oversees the sports medicine, um, the sports medicine program. So as an athletic director of the county, um, my expertise is in sports management, right? I am, you know, doing facilities. I am managing community partners, scholarships, making sure that officials contracts are negotiated, making sure fields are lined, scoreboards are repaired, all of those things. The safety part, I know a little bit about safety, but as important as it is, we wanted to hire somebody who knows a lot about sports medicine. And so phase two of Project 17 was hiring that full-time um, athletic trainer who is the supervisor of all the athletic trainers. So he meets with them monthly. Um, he also had, he manages them through our um, injury reporting mechanism that we use in the district. And he's covering for schools whenever schools have multiple, you know, events that go on. Um, you know, in the NFL, they have several um, team physicians, doctors, athletic trainers, you know, we are lucky enough to have one athletic trainer, but he supports them. So that is a great um, part of Project 17. And now our phase three of Project 17 is how do we support our middle schools? Um, how do we get, because in high school, we have up to 38 sports. In our middle school programs, we have 13 and they do not have a full-time athletic trainer. So our sports medicine supervisor supports them. And now we're working on another part of phase three 
that was similar to how we started um, with our teacher athletic trainer. So where we can hire either individuals in the school or individuals in the community who come out and provide support to our middle schools in the afternoon um, to give them, you know, whether it's, you know, taping, injury prevention, stretching, um, just being there to talk to the kids about hydration and things like that. So that's a little bit about Project 17. Um, you can definitely um, research that, just Google it. There's lots of information on how we started, um, how we managed it throughout the system, and then where we are today, um, and, and even how we've grown that um, to phase two and even phase three. So I'd love to talk about sports medicine if anybody's interested. Um, I'd love to hear what you are doing in your county as far as athletic trainers are concerned in sports medicine. Um, so hit me up at tallyt at duvalschools.org. Um, I'd love to hear from you and share ideas. Thanks again, Jake. Well, again, just a, a great step-by-step uh, -step history of, of how you went from, you know, not having trainers to now every school has it and, and you're even expanding on that, you know, down to the middle school level. Um, look, I'm going to put you on the spot here. We don't normally do this on this segment, but uh, looking back over that process, um, was, did it just kind of grow organically? I mean, the, the, the TAT program, just so simple, but so, uh, you know, very effective. Did, did it just kind of grow naturally? Everything went smooth or were there any hiccups along the way that somebody that wanted to do this can look out for? Uh -huh. Nothing is smooth in athletics, Jake, you know that. And the hiccups and the failures is what makes us so successful, right? So we had lots of hiccups and roadblocks along the way. But I think us going through those challenges has made this program so um, needed. And it, it just, we just, I feel like we have set the bar so high when it comes to sports medicine in our county because um, it was not perfect in the beginning. And we, you know, kind of created it as we went along. And that made it, you know, that really made it our own as well. Exactly. And looking back, I wouldn't have done anything differently. Like I said, those failures prepared us for the success that we have now and just made the program that much stronger. No, absolutely. And I think that's a great lesson for the listeners is that, you know, you, it, you're not going to, if you don't have anything right now, you're not going to end up with this gold medal program tomorrow. You know, it's going to take some time, but mm -hmm. wow, what a roadmap you presented for ADs and, and administrators that have listened and uh, go ahead and give out that uh, contact information one more time, if you would. My email address is tallyt at duvalschools.org. Okay. And again, you can find Tammy on Twitter. Uh, she's very active. Uh, and for NIAAA members, her information is also in the NIAAA portal. Uh, Tammy, thanks so much for uh, sharing. Um, looking forward to seeing you at the upcoming uh, FIAAA conference uh, in May. And uh, all the best for the rest of this school year. All right. Thanks so much. For our listeners, we do this every single week, and the Zoom recordings get uploaded to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time on the Educational AD Podcast. Once again, we appreciate you listening to these episodes, and we do want to thank our sponsors, uh, Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. If you're not taking a survey of your student athletes or your parents, you're really missing the boat. Go to athleticsurveys.com, get in touch with them, uh, find out how you can collect this data that's going to help you run your athletic department better. Um, Sideline Interactive, uh, indoor scoring tables and video boards. Uh, we've got one of their tables in our gym. It's just fantastic. We use it for pep rallies, for signing ceremonies. It's tremendously versatile, and the customer service is out of this world. Go to sidelineinteractive.com for more information. Also, uh, we want to say thanks to Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. Uh, if you're looking for the coolest way to display your school's record boards or to display your school's Hall of Fame, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. Um, their touchscreen consoles are just fantastic. That's vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to thank Final Forms for their support. Uh, Final Forms is the leader in forms and registration, but there's so much more than that. 
Final Forms can help your stakeholders, your coaches, and you. Go to finalforms.com slash Jake to find out exactly how they can help you in your program. We also want to say thanks to Snap Mobile. Go to snapraise.com and check out their entire suite of platforms. We've used SnapRaise, the fundraising platform, with great success, and you can too. There's even a program where you can get your funding before you actually do your fundraising. Does anybody else offer that? You can find it all at snapraise.com. We want to say thanks to Huddle. Uh, go to huddle.com and find out how to use the tools that Huddle provides to help your athletes, your coaches, and use an athletic director to do your job better. That's huddle.com. We also want to say thank you to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Do I need to say anything more? Go to hometownticketing.com. They'll show you how to set up and sell your tickets for all your events online. And we want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to gipper.com and see how athletic directors are creating custom branded content for their school social media channels. It's so easy. Even I can do it. That's gipper.com. Mention our podcast code, ADPOD10, and get 10% off. Thanks again for listening to the Educational AD Podcast. Uh, we appreciate your support. Everybody have a great day.